like, welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show, Taylor and Tracy Bonham. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm glad we could do this what we were saying a little bit before. I think um, to me, you as a musician, as I shared, shared this, is that you are a serious musician that doesn't take your, yourself seriously. And, 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 and by meaning that, I think casual fans that just hear radio music might not get it as much as, say, probably your, your, your fans that follow all of your music, you know? It's true. I think that's a little more, more obvious. They, they know how you're, you're very tongue in cheek. You'll kind of take the piss out of yourself, but your music's very high quality, but it's also has some fun in it too. Yeah. I think it's important. It really is to have fun with what you're doing, but also like what you said, I don't, I don't take myself so seriously that I can't have yeah. a laugh or even make a joke about myself. And, and, but it doesn't take away from music. And that's the fun balance. It's like, it kind of like goes back to like, a, like a, for example, I think like you, it can be so fun, but but the content of what you're saying is still so very important. Mm. You know, like, I love your video that you did um, for, for, for Luck. And I haven't done a while in a while. You did that one. It's kind of like, it's not big, but it's not small. It's just perfect. And it, because I think in a time of, of lack of videos or videos, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a perfect balance to put out where you're not like, I have an eagle flying down and putting a guitar in my hand. Off, you know, but 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 at the same time, you're like, you know, I do have a concept. It's a loose concept here. And, you know, let's right. follow the song. And it allows you, it's also beautifully shot, actually, too, yeah. um, from a video end. It, it was done really well. Yeah. Um, so you've got a couple of things going on. You have a new single out, mm -hmm. uh, Whether We Fall, and you've got um, shows coming up. Right. Let's start there. Okay. Stop with the Great. Stuff with you. Oh, okay. Please start with it. Thank you. Yeah, my latest single, uh, Whether You Fall, uh, which is a remake of um, a song that was on my 2005 album. It just needed to, it needed an upgrade. It, it's such a good song and a fan favorite. People come, have been coming up to me saying that song has really helped them through hard times. And, and I can say the same for myself. So as I started to perform it with my band, mm -hmm it just became obvious it needed to have a, a full band and a fully fleshed out idea. So that's the single out now. Um, the first single um, is called Damn the Sky for Being Too Wide. And that's a title track for the upcoming upcoming album release, which will hopefully be in the fall. I'm doing the thing where, you know, people do it nowadays where they just put out a single before the record. Oh, the old, the old waterfall thing. I guess it's a waterfall thing. And I love it because you get some momentum out of it. Um, it's gone are the days, thank God, uh, where it's like this big, long setup with the record label and marketing and stuff. Of course, those things can help. Obviously, having money behind anything can help. But um, I'm really enjoying this kind of bits and pieces strategy. Well, I think the organic part, I think the beauty of having somebody like you have like a podcast or somebody like like me that does it and, and others, of course, is it's people are really into it. It's not like... um like a guy in a Hawaiian shirt and a cigar going, oh, who's on now? You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. I just tell people with radio, I did some radio stuff earlier in my career and there were guys that had Hawaiian shirts and cigars. It's not even a cliche. It's actually, I think it's a fact. The uniform. It's, it was the dress code. Yeah. And maybe yeah. <laughs> did you meet the guys with the baseball caps turned backwards. Yeah. Those yep. guys. Yeah, exactly. And, and the sold neck shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as we laugh at that, but, but on a serious note, I think what's great is you, you have a very, and it, and it hasn't wavered over the years. You have a very beautiful, but it, your voice is, is, is very strong. It's, okay. it's, I think, is it big? You're welcome. Because you, you're classically trained also with your instruments. Do they kind of all work together as you, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like as you're, mm -hmm. you're in that world of, of, of your instruments being classically trained. So, I mean, your voice just has such a tech, you have such a technique. And I imagine by being such a strong musician, probably follow the same traits with your voice maybe mm. well the voice was just luck <laughs> like man, Keith Richards. I mean, i'm pretty lucky that i that i'm you know that i can sing the way i do it's that's from my ears and that's from absorbing and listening and all of the influences that mm. i love i did try to take classical voice lessons mm. that seemed to just beat the life out of me like it, it was not where i wanted yep. to be and I think maybe it helped with training. It also helped with like taking like voice vocal care. Yeah. But I wasn't interested in singing classical and it just, it wasn't going to be my style. I have a little bit more fire and vinegar. Yeah. And I love, you know, my favorite singers. I've probably said this a million times, but you know, it's like Stevie Wonder and 
um, you know, just kind of that soulful grit. Um, I don't know. I, I borrow from a lot of different singers, so it's really not a trained voice. Um, oh, yeah. So you're you're doing another show though too. Your performances yeah. are different too. You don't do your performances of regular. They're always kind of different. Yeah, I just can't help but I just like to evolve. I like. I have a lot of different influences and and styles and tastes and things that I like to do. And I have a lot of training in, in so many areas. I feel that I can't just do the same thing. I, I'm not going to be a, what is it? A legacy act. I'm not right. It's just really too hard for me. I, I do still play a lot of the old songs, but some of them are just going to sound different because I'm different now. And mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've evolved and I've um, hooked up with some, some really great players. Um, I'm really, really psyched to be playing with two players who actually come from a jazz background, um, who also can lean towards the rock and really put in a lot of fire and passion, but their musicality is beyond anyone I've ever, you know, played with. So that to me is important, really important. What instruments, what do they play for instruments? We've got a bass, we've got Renee Hart on upright bass and Elvester Garnett on drums. Um, and so, yeah, the, you know, we've been playing these shows that are, are different these days. We did um, a, a ballet with my music. And so we basically the trio, which is the three of us, plus, um, you know, someone who's playing wine glasses um, and guitar yeah. and backup singers and um, then two string players like for the, the ballet production in April, yeah. this was Eugene, Oregon. That was like something so completely different, but kind of like the best thing I've ever done. Um, and then since then, the trio has been playing um, shows in the Midwest, uh, West Coast, and now we have some upcoming shows. We've got one in Woodstock, New York, uh, on the 27th of July, which is really special. That's like for the super fans or for the ones who, you know, like my people yeah, uh, in a recording studio where we're making the album. It'll be a really special event. I can plug right. that. If, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, and, and I think it's really important that I'm gonna say two things. First off, I always love to say when people say jazz, they get nervous. Like you hear jazz, and I've had right. these conversations with great rock musicians. You know, from, from Testament, from Helmet, metal, rock, all that can lean back into jazz, jazz chording, and the, the music and the energy and the notes and the beats. It's so out of control when it's done right, and when you mix it with other stuff. It's something special that you just don't get. Right. So anybody that's not aware of that, when you hear jazz, don't run and hide. Right, exactly. It's not what <laughs> it you... It sounds might... really special, but it's not what you're thinking. It's not, right. you know... Because what, what you the, think the genres and the classifications also don't do anything service. No. They don't do anything justice, right? But for me, it really means like the moment and how it's not always going to be like not... It, it's not going to sound the same every single time. Mm-hmm. It, that's what makes it more exciting. Um, The musicianship uh, will lend itself to, you know, maybe there'll be some extra fancy thing I do um, or not fancy, but like uh, something interesting, you know, instead of it being by rote. And I think these players, you know, also listening is something that's huge in in jazz. You listen because you're reacting, you're responding to what's going on. And that is more exciting to me than just playing the same things over and over. Right, it's not so memorized. It's, to me, when I hear jazz, I think I think a fluid musician, which means, you know, they're gonna be aware, not, you're responding, you're talking, it's a musical conversation. Sometimes you can forget what you're doing if you're just watching it, the musicians talk back and forth, you forget what song you're in because it's just so much. That's right. the worst I think I hear being a jazz musician. Sometimes you lose yourself where you're at because you're so into what you're doing. Yeah, that's a beautiful zone to be in. And as an artist, you can't get any better than that. As, right. uh, not, not in the creative end. The only thing I could be better is saying a fan comes up and says, you wrote a song that got me to the hardest time ever. That probably is the best thing. But second best is being in a zone where you just get lost. You know? Right, exactly. And and it's a happening. And that will never happen again. Like the, these are the moments that, you know, you're so happy you were there. And I think this show coming up in the recording studio at ha- Applehead Music um, Recording with the audience in the room, mm-hmm. um, and there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, there's going to be dinner and wine pairing and all this stuff, but it's a happening. And it's only one time 
you know, this can never be repeated. Yeah. And that's what I love about the whole concept, the ideology of jazz. It's not really, yeah, we're not playing like Charlie Parker solos or anything. Right. It's the ideology of jazz. It's the energy. It's it's in the, it's in the moment. You're still creating. And, and I think, and also nowadays, I mean, it's really lacking. It's really yeah. lacking. Yeah. I mean, I think when you first came out, that was probably the, the last gasp when <laughs> bands still had that, you know, I wouldn't even know how to even classify you back then. You're kind of rocky or alternative. -y. I don't even, I hate classifying anything, but I think right. that, that last bit of energy, whereas now it's so much, you know, it's syncopated and it's machines and, and even the singles that are released have to be timed out a certain way, you mm -hmm. know, and, and certain things. So now when, when an artist can continue to do live music like you, you know, that's kind of a gift at this point because that used to be a thing that's not oh, happening anymore. Huge, right? Everyone used to go to live music, uh, to, to venues to see music. They'd even show up to venue, not even knowing who they were going to see. I yeah. I used to do that all the time. Yeah. yeah. It'd just be like, you know, you see something good and then people were trading music, making mixtapes and your identity was tied up in bands and you'd wear the t-shirts. And I mean, it was, I'm nostalgic. Yeah. No, but it, but it, there's a good nostalgia if you, depending on you carry, just like being like a legacy person. Like, mm -hmm. if that's what you do as an artist, that's what you love, and the fans like it, that's awesome. Yeah. And 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 some people are like, I don't really want any songs because it's economically for me, and I'm not really feeling the music. That's awesome for you. You just go out, and you do what you do. I mean, there's music that it feels good. I love it. But what's special for me is when artists like you continue to create, and is it and you've created your own atmosphere. And in a way, I think music almost becomes its own do-it-yourself type of thing because you've kind of created your own field, your own niche. Like you in particular would be one of, would be an excellent example because I wouldn't know, your fan base may have other people that like you and other other similar artists, but you don't really have the genre. Good. You don't have a certain thing. I don't. I think, I mean, the most you get, and I'm sure it makes you crazy and I'll touch this for a second, is, you know, oh, you know, the, your, your big hit, hit that was commercial was, you know, my other great song. Right. Yeah. But there's a billion other songs that you do that were great. Right. That were just actually made even better for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a knock. It's just, you know, I, you got good songs out there. But then people go, oh, was that so-and-so? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know, in the past 20 years, you only did one good thing that was successful and people talk about it all the time. You can yeah. do things every single day and create. Yeah. Yeah. One good song that we everyone knows. That's it. That's not a, the word one hit wonder makes me crazy. I think is what yeah, it is. It's, I think it's, a, it's, it's an it's, industry it's, term really, isn't it? Because it's not fair, right? You no, can't. I hear it all the time with people. They go, "Oh, who do you, what, what hit? Did they, what, what were they one hit wonder to me?" I'm like, "No, there's no such thing as a one hit wonder." They wrote a song that got really commercially well, and they got some cash in their pockets. Ah, oh, good for them. Good right. for them. That's a win. And they can probably right. tour on that when things get hard. That's great. They can keep doing music, but right. don't take away from their entire catalog of music of the whole life of creating. Also, yeah, you know, yeah. Exactly. That to me, it just feels like it's, and I don't think it's on purpose, but I think people say, I think it sounds like it's just, uh, oh, they had one hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had Barbie it's Girl or something. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? And it was like it's that one lazy. thing. And you're like, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's lazy. And 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 that's why it's important for me. I like to bring artists on that even, I try to do like mixed genres on my show because I want people that may have not heard you. Like I was in a lot of stuff, but the rock world, you know, a lot of rock fans go, no, this is not, just, there's a lot going on here, you yeah. know? You got to kind of dig deep. This is a um, musician that writes songs. Were you? How are you writing your songs? Because I, I've always tried to imagine like how you come up with your songs because they always seem kind of different. I don't. You don't really follow up. You know, it doesn't really like if you plot along a certain plan. You know what I'm saying? Correct. You write songs. Yeah, correct. How are you? What's part of the process? Some of the processes that you do. That you, you know, what I'm saying. I'm just interested yeah. as a songwriter. It's, yeah, it changes. So uh, yeah, I. I uh... I've actually dabbled in teaching songwriting courses and I can't do it. It sucks the soul out of me because I don't have a route. I don't have one way of doing it. I can't sit here and go like, okay, well, what I do is I sit down and I know I've got to do verse, pre chorus, chorus. I don't, I, I, it probably is a bit more spiritual for me. I kind of wait for it to happen um, or ideas come. And then I have a really good way of, writing them down and remembering mm -hmm. them and then supporting them with, you know, maybe I'll have a lyrical idea first, which is happening more these days than before. And I'll then kind of like work it out where I'm at the piano quickly, or I get to the guitar, or if I'm on the subway, I'll hit voice record and I'll sing the solfege into the thing. So I don't forget it. Or, okay. you know, um, um, other times it'll be a drum beat 
that will spur a, an entire song. Like I'll be walking down the street and I'll hear do tick gush and then I'll start yeah, singing. Would, like words or melody too. I think I think melody, vocal melody has gotta be the hardest thing because you can do a melody on a guitar by just hitting chords. You can kind of play around, you can give you kind of stumble into something and then rip off of it. A vocal melody, you're really reaching inside of you. Yeah. And you don't want to be copying like, oh, why am I humming this? Because okay, I knew this. I heard this on the I heard it on the subway earlier today. Like you want to be original and it's different pulling from yourself. That always feels like the biggest challenge. Like yeah. a, 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 a defining melody. It's anything like sometimes finding the chords or whatever t- is different, more difficult. Um, if I if I just start humming or if I sit down and I play one chord on the piano and a and a melody comes, sometimes it comes super easy. If I do recognize it, then I think, okay, what's that from? And I'll change it because I don't want to plagiarize <laughs> anybody. Um. Or yourself, right? Do you have that problem sometimes? You're like, this is great. Oh, it's great because oh, I did this. Right. Oh. Well, I plagiarize myself in that <laughs> I, I have the same core progression all the time. And I've masked it pretty well up until now. A but lot I've... of artists do that, though. I know guitarists are like, I wrote a song. Is, is, can, I, can I redo myself? Can I plagiarize myself? Like, it's literally, you get a point <laughs> where you kind of just start cycling through your own stuff. Yeah. And it's just good at it. my favorite. Like, it's just where my ear wants to go. So I've I've done it <laughs> plenty of times. I'll probably continue to do it. Um, it works yeah. for you though. I mean, I don't think it's something that sticks out either. Cause to me, all your albums, all your songs sound differently. And it's like, which I love. I can't be like, Oh, she's this type of music. Oh, she's this type of music. You're just, you know, you're a musician. And it's like, I really couldn't describe it. That's always sort of kind of, you just have to listen to her. Like one of those things that almost feel kind of more fun and adventurous yeah. as a fan of music. Now yeah. the balance of getting uh, an artist like you out to people like that is, is a bigger challenge. I think nowadays with social media, because so, some people yeah. like it. You know, you'll get the the um the fans of music that on Instagram they'll have a picture of them, their their guitar, the them a guitar player, it's more of a picture of the guitar and then uh, something on the sand and a book or something, all these photographs, but they're not really playing a club. You know, you can do a song on Instagram and anybody can swing like through it, but can you put people in a club, even a small club? Yeah. Th- that Easy. transition isn't out there. And I think that, that audience though is not moving as much as they like to move into the cr- into the clubs as much. Right. You know. Things are just so different. And I think COVID made it that much harder for people to get back out of their houses again. Because like at first, like, oh, it's awful. And then and then it's like, oh, well, I can just be on my phone, you know, which has some fun properties to get some stuff done. It's convenient, but you can't not be part of real life. Yeah. And then people are not as used to being in a room with other people because they yeah. spent a lot of time during COVID and before it was kind of leaning that way in front of a computer screen. So people are less apt to go out and be social. I actually like the opposite. I do technology for a living as much yeah. as I can. I'd rather have my guitar or actually as a record player. I'd rather go analog people. This is a conversation. Well, we're using machinery. This is still an analog situation going on here. You know what I mean? We're both using our brains. No one's suggesting conversation things or movies. I don't even like my conversation. Not my AI. Movies. It's not AI. I don't like Netflix. Like, can I suggest this? I'm like, no, don't. I don't want anybody suggesting any music to me. I want to find it the old fashioned way. You know, and I think music fans, though, they are a little bit easier going, I think, into crowds and and open minded. You know what I'm saying? I think my concern is newer fans. Mm -hmm. Do you have, have you noticed some of your, um, probably fans more my age bringing their kids to the shows? Yeah. And it's starting to change the pace a little bit. Do you think it's starting to open doors or just evolve like a next generation? I suppose so. I mean, yeah, I really love that when someone brings their 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 kid and the kid is just as uh, you know, passionate about it. I love that so much. I've I've been having that actually quite a bit. So, you know, hopefully that is a trend. I don't know. You know, hopefully I have faith in young people and I have faith that at some point, at some point in their lives, hopefully young lives are gonna be like, I'm so tired of this thing. And or, you know, they re- they notice how they've got such a malaise in their brain and they're just going to be like, I'm putting it down. I'm going to go out and I'm going to go, you know, experience something in real life. I, I have faith that that young people will want to do that at some point. I think that we talk about in the show for people that aren't aware, if an artist comes to your town, you need to see them. It costs for the bus, costs for the van. Um, the venues, if you're going to go, go see a show, the venue is going to be, now the venue is trying to take money for the merch. Like the yeah. Mob. <laughs> exactly. I, it kills me it is i i it makes me crazy i talked about time so if you can buy the merchandise at the, on the web artist website because they're gonna get more of the money 
I want people to understand the challenges. And if the artist is coming to your town, they've yeah. already got a lot of hoops. So to hear like, oh, they didn't play my song. Well, you got the, you got the album. Just play this uh, album. Get right. some sock puppets and play the album. Well, that could be <laughs> the next video. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but but seriously, I mean, it it takes away from the artist. So it, you know, I want people say if you, you are in town, you're doing a show, or you're doing a special show with a ballet. These are special things. Just listen. So you, if you're gonna get the ballet, it's you hiring people to do the ballet. It's their time, their work. It's not just like a one-off. People spontaneously show up. It's all planned out. It's a budget. It's this, that. There's big numbers involved yeah. to have this one night thing that people go and go. Oh, I paid twenty bucks. I paid forty bucks. Like you have no idea the value that's getting squeaked out of that ticket. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Right. Everybody. Yeah. But you, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have really said anything about it until we start talking about it because you're like, yes, yeah, it's my job. I do it. Yeah. But but right, and you should. And I, I, that's what I love about an artist. Like you, you don't have to. But like someone like me, I want people to understand in a way. Not doing some complacent because even before they get to the one part where they're on stage to do that great show, there's so much going on behind. You know, it was it takes a village, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and and you know, to get it done. And and the hustling and the this and that and then the insurance. So these are special events. And and when so and particularly about you, when you're having all these special shows you're doing because you do a lot of different stuff. You know, go there, buy two shirts and really help keep the machine going. It's important. You know? Yeah. It you know, More to me. Better. More than ever, because, you know, we're not making money selling music anymore. We're no. just not. So the only way we're making money really, <laughs> or I mean, I'm breaking even, I guess, is is the touring and the the merch, I suppose. Right. And and, and it's, and there's some, some artists actually tra- just come to the to America. Some of the okay. other bands are in the red just because they want to come and do a thank you. I mean, how can you live in the red? I mean. Ask anybody that's talking, like, you know what I mean? Watching the show. How can you, can you take a year off and make negative money to support something you like? No, you like it, but you can't support it. So, because they've got, they get double tax. They have to do $5,000 of these, I think. And then they get tax coming in and then they get tax coming out. You know, so it's it's hard. And that's why artists don't tour over in Europe as much anymore either. It's it so much. I really miss that. Yeah. I mean, it's, or, or you have to do like a small crew. It's like you, two people in your stuff and a couple pieces of instruments and you're renting gear as you go, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it, you know, and that's a hustle streaming, but and there's also merch like, like vinyl and stuff like that. And they're doing tchotchkes to help an artist. You know what I mean? That's, that's really what it comes down to. Do you have a schedule now that you're doing your, you're writing music too? Or are you just writing when you have it and you get inspired and kind of, or are like some companies coming to you because you're kind of a different kind of artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I write when it hits me, honestly. Yeah, and then you have enough songs. And you're like, all right, I'm ready, and then kind of like look at the the atmosphere and see what you want to do. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. It it there'll there'll be times when there's plenty, plenty of new material, plenty of songs, and then there's times mm-hmm. when it's just a little bit slow. And I kind of just it, over time, I know when I'm about when I'm about ready to make an album, when I have enough material. Kids music education one. Yeah, that was. Thank you. That's what I was going to talk about. Yeah, Melodian. Yeah. I, I, I learned a new word today. <laughs> Melodian. It doesn't yeah. just flow out for me. Um, yes, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, thank you. That's really What's cool. What's that all about a little bit more for people that aren't aware of it? Because that's kind of a, the album, but if you see the album, you don't get all the full details. Right, because it's way more than an album. Um, so I had been writing these music education songs, much like uh, when I grew up, I was watching Sesame Street or Electric Company or Schoolhouse Rock, right? Where all of these oh, yeah. songs were catchy and you'd start, you'd learn without even realizing you're learning. And there'd mm-hmm. usually be a great cartoon and stuff. Um, those songs started to kind of drop from the sky I'm going to say I started writing those around 2014, 2015, and I had been teaching as well because I got off the road with a blue man group and I was trying to start a family. And so teaching became my like side hustle. And I can, because I can teach piano, you know, violin um, voice or whatever. But I, I found that there were, there wasn't anything that was really inspiring for students. There were no materials or books or videos or anything that were, that weren't just like, put your finger here and then play row, row, row your boat, you know? And, and, you know, a lot of it, I think for me, when I grew up, it was not only 
the material and the people I was around, the great teachers and, and um, yeah, just inspiring teachers who loved teaching so much and wanted to teach the joy of practice, not just mm. by rote. Um, I mean, I did have some teachers that were, you know, could have really discouraged me. I had one Wanda Eastwood, sorry, you're up in heaven, but you know, she would hit my hand if I was doing something and she'd fall asleep in the next minute. And she, you know, like, a lot You'd be of awfully giving, assuming she's in heaven if she was hitting a child's hand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Maybe she didn't know him. Yeah, well, you know, like she was one of those teachers. And and I hear a lot of people come up to me and say, yeah, I had a teacher that discouraged me or somebody told me I couldn't sing. Somebody told me I was bad. I was out of tune. Mm -hmm. I had plenty of those, but I also had a lot more of the, the, the beautiful spirited teachers that made me want to practice and play. So back to when I was started writing these songs for my lessons, it came from that spirit. It was okay. not just about technique, which some of these songs actually teach you music theory within the song. It also teaches uh, or it encourages a joy of music, a joy of expression. Um, there's one song called Me Symphony, where the story is like, I forgot all my instruments I walked out on stage, I forgot my instrument and my tubas in Aruba, my shakers in Jamaica, whatever. And I have to learn how to, the show must go on. So I have to learn how to perform without any of my, you know, devices or my um, instruments. Those kinds of messages in the songs exist for the kids to, to take away with, you know, learn how to be flexible, learn how to just do it anyway, learn how to share your voice, learn what a pentatonic scale is. And they're all of these, all of the lessons are, are really neatly hidden inside the music, which I love. So that album came out in 2021 and there's way more material for us. Uh, my partner and I um, were creating this business where it's, there's going to be video content. So it there's feels like there's so much could be from that. I've been listening to it, you know, and now I learned a new word. I just feel <laughs> I, I feel like just so much it could come from that because it's it's very inspiring in a way. Like, I mean, to me, my discouraging, I didn't learn guitar until like five or six years ago. I didn't pick it up because I had one of those horrible wood acoustic guitars with the steel strings wow. and the action you, you could you could have put like quarters, not a quarter, like a pack of them just rolling right underneath the action. <laughs> your fingers would bleed. And I'm like, that's all I could afford. So I'm like, I'm not gonna play guitar. Right. And yeah. and, and, the, and the instruction was differently. But when you have somebody that even you have to, you, you know, here's the thing, like you, you still have to learn something. You do have to study. You do have to practice up. There's there's such a thing as muscle memory that's going to help you out. If you can make it more fun, it's great. But sometimes you just got to do it. If you want to be a cook, you still learn the, the details. You you just can't that's be good. also right. something without putting some effort in. You, you, there's got to be sweat equity. Yeah. But if somebody can inspire you to, to give you a different view on looking at it or or you're almost practicing, you're, you're practicing flexibility. It's not, it's not an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Like doing it that way. You say, okay, you're going to the room. You don't have this. What are you going to do? If you yeah. keep doing it, it's like improv, 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 improv you know, yeah. you build up this, this, um, this tool chest. Tool chest and confidence. Like, right. you know, even if it's like speakers, like somebody's going to do a book tour or a speaker in front of a large amount of people. Like it's the same thing. You know, you, you need mm -hmm. that toolbox. Yeah, well, yeah. If you, if you can do that, you can do anything. And it does. I think it also leans over to other parts of your life. Yeah, if you sure. have that kind of confidence, and and I think that is something that's missing. With with with, with there's, 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 there's very few things out there like that. There's a few for different age groups. Yeah, but I think yours is is an, um, a middle to higher up age group. It's kind of missing. Right. You know, I don't and think I just think there's an age limit on it. You know, what I'm and yours it feels more right. open. Well, yeah, like I could. I think that this is going to be a project that we'll probably do for the rest of our lives because we, you know, I love going down to the really young kids before they hear the word, you know, you can't and stuff. But there's also so much to share with the intermediate intermediates and the teenagers and even, you know, God, we could open up a whole school for adults too. But um, well, there is adults that didn't that didn't think they could do it, and then the world's different, and they see something on YouTube until I see some kid from some other country like five years old who can shred i'm just trying to form a bar chord <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you, yeah. And i want to throw it out you know but on a serious note it shows the world's a lot more open that you don't have to be you know i love when i hear someone like i'm 75 years old i'm just learning guitar i'm just learning to sing that's awesome it's so good and and 
But a program like this could really bridge a gap because yeah. there's an intimidation factor. Yeah. I'd love to do music, but I don't do this. Well, why don't you just do it? I tell them, you know, just yeah. go on YouTube and buy a guitar. You, you know, just try it. You can't make a mistake. They do it again. Keep doing it twice. Most There's musicians, so... when, they, when they make a mistake, they do it twice. It's, it's on purpose now. Just... Right. There's so many self limitations that we all put on, you know, we, ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, you know, getting older and wiser. That's part of the fun is trying to unravel that and unlearn all those things, whether they came from the external, whether they came from our parents, our teachers, our siblings, or just that inner critic. Um, but what's fun is starting to kind of dispel all that stuff. And I, that's why I love teaching. I actually teach, you know, teenagers, uh, my rock vocal camp. Um, I love that age because, you know, I talk all, that's the, the age when it's ripe, right? You've got all of these negative, you know, voices up in your head yep. and you're intimidated and you're nervous and you're shy. And, you know, I love working with kids at that age too, because, you know, you can live a whole lifetime and still have, you know, you can be a full grown adult and still have all of those insecurities. And I think everybody does. I mean, we exactly. And, and myself included, but man, is it great to start to unravel that and then learn how that you have a voice and your voice is unique and you can use it for expression and you can learn a new trade or instrument. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Well, I mean, that again, yeah, that's just helping feel on just a whole other level. Like, you know, I wish I knew kind of like what I know now as far as like confidence and talking to people. I did back then and being, you know, you're always afraid to try anything new. There's a million things I would have loved to try in music. I would love to try, but I would have been intimidated by. Yeah. Now as an adult and going through things and seeing someone else doing going, well, why can't they do it? Oh, the, why Why can't I do it? You know, right. but that took a lot of time. So having, you know, a teacher that does, that lives it. And you, you walk the walk though too, because you're still a creative entity where you're not like, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, a gym teacher used to be an athlete and now you're just like kind of right. helping people along, which is right. so great because there's a certain point where you do age out. So yeah. you, this is not an age, this is not an age out type of career you have here. You're like, I'm still doing this. You can do this. You can't anymore. I mean, I'm going to do it. Keep on keeping yeah. on. Yeah. And it doesn't for me now, I don't, you know, I might not. Uh, you know, be plastered all over the billboards anymore, you know, and that's fine. I'm not expecting that. And age and, you know, being a woman is, is, is kind of difficult, but I'm, I'm kind of finished with caring about that stuff because it is about the music. When, when you were, I didn't add you this happens to everybody. When you were everywhere visually and it has changed and, and then it's like, you know, the, the difference, you know, that who's the new teen stars or whatever, the K-pop, whatever. I don't even know them all myself. You know? <laughs> But when it changed, like at first it was really cool, but then I must have been like just kind of almost like overwhelming. Like I just want to eat, I just want to go to the store and, and get. Like, I don't think if you was being like a rock star, like uh, you know, flying in my jet, my caviar. I'm like, you're like I just want to go out to dinner with my kids and my husband. Or I'm like, you know, what I'm saying I just want to do stuff without. But I don't want to be ungrateful either because yeah. it is a gift. But at the same time, I don't yeah. mind personal time. Yep. Yeah, and it plays with your mind. You know, it, it, I remember, you know, because I was. I think I was immature. I wasn't really young. I was about 27 when things started to really hit for me, but I was still kind of immature, maybe not like on solid ground. And I would just be so insecure if I was waiting in the line for the bathroom at a restaurant. I'd be like, I feel so exposed and people, oh, are yeah. what am I doing here? You know, and it, it played on my insecurities so much. Oh, really? Interesting. It's too self aware, I guess. I'm not self aware. I mean, self insecure you know that word is but it probably helped you help a lot of people at least the, the hindsight because it, it plays into your music and your lyrics yeah you know who, who you are but I, I, to me i was probably doing the same way i think if i ever had that it would be really weird you know yeah. it, because you're like uh, this is me but this isn't always me this is you know the performer but afterwards i'm not that person you know entertaining you i'm just being me get through the yeah. day so I would imagine now not having that everywhere is almost going to be kind of a nice thing where. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even it's. Except weird. for maybe good seats at a show or trying to get in a club or something, you know, like, right. you know, I am. No. <laughs> Don't <laughs> you know. your CD up next to your head. Don't you know who I was? Um, well, it's, it's weird now because yeah, I don't, you know, I only, I only hear about like, I don't know. People don't come up to me. They, they're not like, are you Tracy Bonham? But I will hear about it later that like maybe somebody small, that small talk or whatever, or even my best friend the other day, yesterday, she said, 
well, you're a rock star. So, and, and oh, oh God, when I heard her say that, I was like, I am like, I don't live like that. I don't feel like that. But then part of me was kind of like, cool. <laughs> Maybe I still am. It's, it's I'll start surprising. throwing some TVs out the uh, hotel exactly. windows and drive your motorcycle down the high house. Like, what's that one? Leather pantsuit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, but I imagine that it's got to be kind of odd. Also, people come to you, aren't you that? Did you have this song? And you're like, yeah, yes, I had that song. Girls just want to have fun. Like, I yeah, would have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you didn't know it, I would totally have fun being like, yeah, I had, I would just yeah. be riffing off of something That's new every cool. time. Okay. I totally remember I would be, that. I'd be, I'm Tracy. I'd be like, Tracy Ullman, Tracy, like, Tracy, I, Chapman. I, 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 Tracy <laughs> Chapman would be a good one. <laughs> like, I would yeah. totally be just playing with it all the time because I just think I couldn't do it seriously. And A, if you didn't know who I was at that point. Right, right. You're just doing that weird celebrity thing, and that's just weird. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. Because then you're just fan seeking. Um. So, so this, let's talk a little about the album, and so people can see the dates and stuff. So, the worst that thing is, it's like, how is it? Is it sold out? Is it like, oh no, fan no. invite? Like, what's what's the deal with it? So people can go oh, to it or a ticket link. Yeah. Um. I guess I can share the ticket link with you. I don't know how that works, but, um. So it's um. You know, it's a special event. There's really a limited amount of seats, but we, but at this point, you know, um, we were still doing the reach out. So, but it is so special. I think people are not quite understanding what it is, or maybe um, it's just so different. It's a, in the studio where we um, are making the album and the studio is called Applehead Recording. And it's mm-hmm. got a long history. Uh, and they've, you know, made so many um so many albums there over the years and um they had been doing this before covid they'd been doing this it's called the woodstock sessions and they have bands come in and their fans buy it to to come and have dinner and there's a wine pairing um and you know it's like a local uh restaurant and there's a you know the cocktail hour you hang out and then the band performs basically like a live performance but it's also recorded and so the audience in the room adds to the energy and, and basically we're making, they're making a live album. And so I think the idea is still, it's different for people, but it's so incredibly special because when do people, when does average yeah. Joe get to go into a studio and watch a recording session be a fly on the wall for something like that? And then, you know, uh, and then the additional fun things of having dinner and wine pairing and cocktail hour and meeting the artist and coming home with the free stuff. You get a free vinyl when the album is released. And nice. so it's really a special, special event. And I think it adds to ours. I think like, I know like Black Crows and a lot more like country rock. They used to be more thing where you can kind of go in because having it, first off, as an artist, the vibes of having your fans there, because there's going to be a, a lot of true fans there. The energy of that is something you don't get in a studio. So it's right. very exciting. I would assume maybe a nervous energy at first, maybe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, but it's exciting. You're like, ah, oh, you're sharing some new music. Yeah. The people that want to hear new music, because yeah. it's also something that you don't hear as much nowadays, you know, a yeah. whole album of new music or, yeah. or how you're doing renditions or whatever it is. And then everyone wants to be there. And yeah. then you're feeding off of that and recording it. Yeah. And, and to have a, a nice recording situation mixed with live. It's not something that you normally have. That's true too. I mean, we're getting we're getting plenty of live board, you know, recordings uh, from our most recent things, and yeah, it's it's you know, you still have to put a lot of work in what to to mix things, or you know, maybe it doesn't turn out as well, or whatever. So this is going to be really special. And, well, and- it's built like that. They've had people in the room, and in <laughs> I have a degree in recording, so I think when people hear like a live thing and, and, and add this to people, listen, even if you're like a live thing, it's a challenge for you because. They set up the sound in the room. It's not a full room. They're balancing it out. And they get a full room. It absorbs the sound. The sound goes differently. Flat walls, you know, cell walls, wood walls. Everything changes all the time. It's a living, breathing thing, sound. Yeah. And to be able to do it, so a live recording in a situation like this, to me, would be like an artist's dream because it's a controlled sound setting. That's so you true. know what you're getting. Yeah. And also, if there's like a major clam or a train wreck, yep. you know, I'd just be like, hey, let's yeah. just start again. And maybe yeah. the audience would love that because it's so unique and different, you know? I think they would. It's it's live, you know? And that's the, the joke. I've always a musician's like, well, if I do it once, you know, it's a mistake, do it twice. It's on purpose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, exactly. a new part. it's a new part of the song. It's an extra yeah, exactly. riff. It's a new, yeah. something. 
you yeah. know, when is, when is this going to be? This is um, July 27th up in Woodstock, New York. And so I'll share the ticket link with you. Yeah, not too far from so, and, and the history of uh, Woodstock and for me in Woodstock, I I lived there for so many years. I bought my first place in 2005, 2006. And, uh, and then, um, so then me and my family moved uh, across the street to where the original Applehead recording used to be, which is a very really? special property yeah it was a big um, a building that used to be a dance hall way back in the way 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 back and then michael lang who was the main promoter of um and the creator of woodstock um you know the music festival in mm -hmm. 1969 he bought that property he made it a recording studio the structure where i lived and then the new guy this guy michael birnbaum bought the property and made applehead so in okay. those walls where i lived I mean, there's music coming out of the walls, like, you know, and everyone from like, you know, Los Lobos to like, I think Jimi Hendrix did some work there. Bowie did some work there. Um, Fiona, no, um, some of my really good friends actually have recorded there. Um, but then they, sorry, it's, it's kind of convoluted, but then they moved um, into a new property. That's where this current okay. head is. But for me, I just feel like it's all one, you know, big history and I'll be telling stories, you know, in between the songs. I'm still trying to kind of figure out, curate how that show is going to go. But I want it to be really special. Well, I think just from talking to you, it feels like it's not going to be as much a struggle. And I always think when you say couldn't teach songwriting, I think in a way you're talking about it and talking about the other stuff you did, you kind of talk about the essence of what songwriting is. It's not, you can read a book, but it's what's inside of you and how you establish it and pull it out to you. And there's different ways of presenting it, like painting or art or drawing. Yeah. It's more about owning your inspiration yeah. and the journey to it. Yeah. And I think you very you kind of touch on that when most things you do, it feels like, you know. Yeah. yeah, I don't like to be confined. You know, I mean, I some of my a lot of my songs, most of my songs are, you know, they follow some kind of formula, but not all. And I really try to work around it, you know, and if I'm inspired to do something like, for instance, the song Damn the Sky for Being Too Wide, which is the first single that was released in April, I believe, or March. Um, that doesn't follow any kind of formula because I wrote that in one sitting, lyrics and all. So that's a, a that's very fun. rare occasion, but I've done that once or maybe twice where I feel it coming. I go to the piano and I hit voice record because I'm like, there's something happening. And I finished playing it and I listened back and I was like, well, that's done. And it's not a typical form. The chorus doesn't even come until like three quarters of the way in. And, you know, there's all these other different little refrains and twists and turns. And it's not your typical pop song, rock song um, form at all. And I love that. I want that. Well, it's it, it a good song. It's really a journey. I mean, it really is, you know, some open air spaces for sounds and lack of sounds, you know what I mean? It's, that's the essence of what it is. If it can touch you and you can feel it. Um, so with this other event, are you going to be doing kind of touring too, like over the course of the year, harder for the album or is it the economy is kind of weird or just the band like, or just life in general? You know what I'm saying? Like, life in general. Life in general life is, is weird. Cool. Life is weird lately. Being a grown up is not what I thought it was going to be. I just want to tell you right now. I want life to talk to the makers is, of that. Whoa. Yeah, and life in the in my fifties has been really odd. Um, well, we did do some touring, and we're back from the touring, and we do have the Woodstock date, and we have um, oh a date in Brooklyn on August eighth, and then after that, you know, I, I, it's like oh my god, I forgot to get on the horse about. The future, you know, a lot of these clubs, they're mm -hmm. already booked like a year out, you know, maybe like mm -hmm. eight months out. And so I'm like, oh, crap, I guess, you know, I got to get on the horse for like next spring or something. So, um, you know, maybe I'll just focus on getting the album done, getting the album out, promoting it, writing more, you know, doing what I need yeah. to do. But also, I've had some health stuff, uh, which has come up, which has been really annoying. Um, Sorry, kind of way. yeah but but like it's it's good to also pay attention to health and uh you know being present for yourself <laughs> well it's going to affect your longevity too is who you are you know i think you know it's important as an artist you, you take care of yourself because being on the road is also very hard yeah true true so true it's, 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 it's like a nightmare actually 
Wow. It's, it's hard. It's, I mean, I've been enjoying this, but it takes me so long to recover after doing a show. I mean, I used to bounce back. I would do show after show after show and, you know, t- city after city, but um, it's different now. Uh, yeah, I'm 53. I don't like, I, I, am I going to go over this person's house this weekend or this person's house? Because then I got to recover. This yeah, emotion recovery talk, is talk, I can talk to all these people. I got to get in the car and you know, I know it's only a pound away. I'm eating other strange food. My body doesn't always react anymore the way I am. I didn't sleep with the night before. Right. right. I don't crazy. know who that guy is anymore, right? Yeah. And you walk by the mirror, you're like, who's that old guy looking at me? You know? <laughs> oh, that was me. <laughs> yeah. You look, you know. But yeah. but but it is a serious as, as an artist, like I I couldn't do it. I, I got so I have much respect for anybody that's over the age of 30 touring at this point because it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's granular. So I'm encouraged you to go to your website. Yeah. Probably yeah. the best place to go. And social media, of course, you know, I'll put the links under okay. the podcast and under YouTube. I do want to end on one note. I do want to say, and it's totally a nerd fan thing, is I love a while back you did the, uh, you and Fred, did you try out for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> the, the dry humor in that had me in tears. Really? Oh, I don't think people, oh because it's so dry and deadpan. No. It's so I mean, dumb. I'm I mean, laughing. I'm, you can probably see when it know. comes to the back oh, of my Oh, I can see it. I can feel it. I'm like, this is so funny. Yeah. And just, I don't know how you can sit in a room with him anyhow, but you delivered yourself, but you, you did, you handled yourself quite well. You like helped get your own with him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really hard. And it made it really funny. A Maserati driver and I'm like in a coupe or something. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, I want to toot my own horn. That whole concept was my idea to audition it's for real. my own. But then he just, all he needed to know was like, okay, that's what we're doing. Okay. And then he, you know, he had a little prop and then he just went and he just knew exactly how to handle it. Like, I don't even know what I clicked. I clicked on to see it. I go, okay, I get it. Oh, it's kind of funny. This is cute. We keep going and going. And he's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to be this person now. And he's done with a coffee cup. And he starts playing with person I was like, oh my God, this is like yeah. really getting crazy. Yeah. People go check it out. It's on, it's, it's online. It's so funny. It's, it's yeah. actually on your YouTube page, I believe. Yeah, I believe um, so. So go to YouTube too. Also support it. Subscribe to that. Help help everything and support you. This has yeah. been awesome for you. I want to thank you very much. And maybe when your album comes out totally down the road, I can uh, get you back on, and I'll we'll go through the songs, and I'll totally nerd Great. out over it. You know. Yeah. It's been an honor. Thank you very thank much. You so much.